Welcome to our Good Friday service this evening. If Palm Sunday felt like a walk in a garden, tonight's service is going to feel like a walk in the desert. Last night, Monday, Thursday, was a feast. Tonight, it's going to feel more like a famine as we remember the sorrows and the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, I will be br preaching briefly this evening, summar summarizing the series that we've had on Matthew 24 about the signs of Christ's second coming. And then at the very end of the service, the, light, the lights are going to be going down. It's going to be dimmer and darker in here. And I'm going to be carrying out the Christ candle. Please do not leave until the Christ candle is returned. And then we ask that you leave in silence tonight. We'll begin our service with the ringing of the bell, followed by the opening hymn. Of wicked men, 
and to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Please be seated. We conclude our passion history this evening with the burial of our Lord. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's children. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they pierced. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloe about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen cloths with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There they laid Jesus, therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after him and beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Now the next day, they followed the day that followed the day of preparation the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, After three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Here ends the Passion reading. We sing our sermon here. <laughs>
Please rise. The text for our message this evening is from Matthew 24. And I'll begin reading at the 29th verse. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. This is the word of God. Please be seated. Well, throughout this season, we have been studying the signs that Jesus lists here in Matthew 24 that things he says must take place before he would return. And we're now coming to the end of the passage. We've also been looking at some of the texts in uh, St. Paul's writings where these things are mentioned, as well as the book of Revelation. Today I'm going to briefly review the different signs that Jesus lists. And uh, I'll be reading to you from, from chapter 24. I'm going to start at verse 1. Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all these? Do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. And uh, we know from Mark that this was Peter and Andrew and James and John who came with their questions. Saying, tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the close of the age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes, in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And I noted just this past Sunday about how even in Antarctica, there are churches now since 1913 the gospel has truly been spread throughout all the world, just as Jesus describes here in the text. At this point, Jesus begins to answer a different question for the apostles. They wonder what's going to happen to the temple. And Jesus explains to them how the temple is going to be destroyed. And this was fulfilled by the Romans in 70 AD when they came and conquered. And then he comes back to the signs of the end. And I'll read that text once again. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. So we get a picture here from Jesus of all of these various events and fulfillments. And we see as we look around us and as I've described through the Lenten season, the fulfillment of these things that Jesus has 
described. And then he tells us the last signs are going to be signs in the heavens. Signs in the heavens. And Jesus will appear in the heavens. We will see him coming with his angels. And his angels will be sent out to divide the righteous from the wicked. The righteous will be taken to be with the Lord. And the wicked will be taken away to punishment. At that time, when Jesus comes back, he's telling us that most people are going to be mourning. They're going to feel afraid and threatened by all of this that's happening. But Jesus tells us that the elect, that's what he calls believers, those who have repented of their sins and trusted in Jesus, he says that the elect will be taken care of by those angels. One of the things that, that Jesus teaches us to pray in the Lord's Prayer, in fact, it's the last petition in the Lord's Prayer. He says to pray, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. And that day when Jesus comes back, that is when the fullness of that deliverance from evil will take place. As you pray the Lord's Prayer, pray about the evils that exist here in, and now, those, those evils that threaten us and, and would harm us. Pray about those things, but have this picture also in your mind of that last deliverance from evil. When Jesus comes back and the angels separate the elect to take them to be in peace in God's Kingdom. That is our full, full redemption and deliverance from evil. All the blessings that Christ won for us upon the cross as we're remembering on this Good Friday, all of that will come to bear in that moment when Jesus comes back. St. Paul teaches us to pray for that moment. Pray for that moment. Pray for that day. Pray that Jesus would return and that he would return soon. He teaches us to say this. And as we're praying tonight, what's called the reproaches. These are, these are prayers of repentance. As we're praying those tonight, mingle in with those prayers of repentance. Your prayers for the return of Jesus. Jesus. That he would come as he describes with the clouds of heaven and with his angels. That full redemption and deliverance from evil. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Recite our Lenten verses. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. The choir will now sing.
required for that meditation. We continue with the offering. Testify against me, 
because I led thee through the desert forty years, and fed thee with manna, and brought thee into a land exceeding good, thou hast prepared a cross for thy Savior. He is the size and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with the grief.
done unto thee? Or wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. I did go before thee in the pillar of cloud. Thou hast led me unto the judgment hall of Pilate. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Thee, 
or wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. I did give thee a royal scepter. Thou hast given unto my head a crown of thorns. He has done no violence, neither was any deceit in his heart. Holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. 